start by saying thank you. I need to say thank you to all the parishes who um, took part in the parish share pledge process during the summer months. A particular thank you to the 55% of parishes who pledged 5% or more. And then another thank you to those parishes who responded um, to the letter that Bishop Paul sent to you during the summer uh, where we gave you an update on the parish share pledge process and I'll come back to that in a bit. And then thank you to those of you who operate within deaneries, on finance teams and treasurers groups who are all part of that process. We wouldn't be where we were today without all of that. But before I delve into the budget, I thought it would be worth us just taking a step back from the diocese finances and just looking a little bit wider at the finances of us as parishes and diocese combined. Because that's actually probably an, a data set we don't often look at, and it might be one that surprises you. And on the slide, there is some data that's taken from 2015, so this is last year's uh, parish financial returns. And what you will see uh, on the left, uh, parish income of about 12.9 million of which then 4.9 million was pledged as share payments in 2015. That then added to some diocesan income of 4.2 gets you to the one, two, three, third column from the left of the diocesan income. But in total, we are blessed with over 17 million pounds. Now some of it's sitting in different pots, but it's worth just holding on to that number because that is a very significant amount of funds that we have at our disposal to deliver our ministry across the whole diocese. I'm going to now go back to the budget. I'm going to talk about the income assumptions for 2017. I'm then going to talk about what we're going to spend it on in 2017. And I'm then going to give you the sort of the results of that equation, which is going to be an operating deficit. And then I'm going to tell you what are the repercussions of that. So that's the order we're going to go through the sort of logic of the budget. So in terms of our income in 2017, um, three major sources, 4.93 million from share pledges, just over 2.4 from the Archbishop's Council, and this is um, what some of you will remember was called selective allocation. And that number is on a decline, it's on a reducing number, and that's part of the central financial strategies of the Church of England to reduce selective allocation and change it in its sort of how it operates. And increasingly, there'll be a mode where we bid for funding, and in fact, our missional leadership for growth course is part of one of those bids. And then the final column, two points, just over two million, is other income, that's investments and other funding. That gives a grand total of 9.44 million of total income. So let's look at the parish share in more details. We had set a target of an overall increase of 5% for the 2017 pledges. So that would have been uh, 200,000, the green graph there, uh, second in from the left. So the request for 2017 was in effect 5.1 million. What we actually received was 4.9, a significant shortfall. And that shortfall is about £200,000. Now, a few of you might be saying, hang on, didn't she just say that at the start that 55% of parishes pledged over 5% for 5%? So how on earth did we end up with a shortfall of 200000 the answer is actually that although 55% of parishes did um, pledge 5% or more, there was a number of parishes, particularly some of our larger contributors, who were unable to pledge at that level for a variety of reasons. So therefore the data set is skewed and it wasn't totally uh, due to the larger parishes um, not being able to pledge at 5%, but that is one of the main factors for the shortfall being at 200,000, even though 55% of our parishes pledged at 5% or more. There are some consequences of this, of that red line there on the right that I'll come back to. So how will we spend our budget in 2017? 
I think most of you will know this, but it's worth just recapping. On the left, we have parish and local ministry. This is the cost of paying our parish priests predominantly, their stipends, so they can deliver ministry right across the diocese. This is the largest spend area, as you can see. The next category are our central services. And this includes um, some of those things that are the backbone of what we do structurally. So it's how we manage our finances, our clergy housing, um, our safeguarding, our human resources, our legal and communication spends, uh, the running of Cuthbert House. It's all of those sort of things. And then we have a category supporting the wider ministry of the church. And this includes the education, um, some of the partnerships we support, but also the contribution we make to the development and training of the next generation of priests in the Church of England. Houses is sort of what you might expect it to be. It's houses. And this is the part of the budget that pays for the upkeep and refreshment, refurbishment of our clergy homes. And they're more than just houses. They are actually the homes that our clergy uh, live in. And that's the reason why we hold them, actually. It's part of how we deliver ministry. And then there's a final category there of parish support. Um, and in this category are those activities that we want to do to grow mission from the teams that help us do that centrally. We've heard from some of those people and heard about their activities earlier this morning from Andrew and Sharon. So in total, that comes to 10.29 million. For those of you who can remember a slide or two back, the income was 9.44. So, 9.44 of income, 10.29 of total expenditure. We then have some uh, movement from reserves that we had planned some years ago, predominantly to support the uh, refreshment and improvement of our clergy housing stock. But that ultimately leads to the um, rather imposing red bar on the right, and that is an operating deficit of 0.63 million. That operating deficit isn't just a bar on a graph on a PowerPoint slide. That represents money and funds that we will have to draw down from our reserves. All of you, I know, will understand that you cannot keep drawing down from reserves forever. And that is the challenge that we are facing at this point in time as we both look at this budget and future projections for the diocesan finances. So in order to meet this budget and remain within that um, operating deficit window, there are a number of activities that must happen. And they must happen because we cannot keep running at those sort of deficit levels. We have to get to the point of being at a balanced budget sooner rather than later. And the target we have set ourselves had been 2020. So contained within the numbers that I have shared with you, there are a number of important repercussions. I hesitate to use the word savings that is on the slide, but there are repercussions that in effect then are financial savings but their repercussions are far wider potentially than just finance. We've identified some modest savings in how we run and operate Cuthbert House. We've identified that there might be some parts of the housing budget that we can um, reduce or defer, and that's partly linked um, to some of the points coming later about clergy stipends. We've taken a decision that we will not um, recruit into the full complement of possible vacancies at Cuthbert House and Central Posts. And therefore, any vacancy that arises will be carefully considered. There will not be an automatic, um, you know, somebody leaves, somebody comes back in. Every vacancy has to be considered and its need um, thought through. But the part that, in financial terms, is called a saving is the next point. The budget, as I have presented it, has 126.4 posts supported. That compares to the current deanery planning number, and all of us are involved in deanery planning. We have numbers that we are um, looking to design patterns of ministry for, and that number at the moment is 131.9. Now, can I just be very clear at this point? 
When I say posts supported in the budget of 126.4, that may not mean that at every month of the year next year we have 126 clergy.4 in post. The very nature of this number is that there are some peaks and troughs as people retire, move on, um, there are redeployments and parish restructures, and that will be the average number that we will need to achieve during the year. And this is a number that our archdeacons in particular um, will be responsible for managing too. So initially, although that looks a very drastic change from 131.9, it may not feel that different immediately, but there are some repercussions of it. During the early autumn, we just put a sort of slight pause on some recruitment activities, just whilst we took breath and understood the repercussions of the 2017 parish share pledge. That is not the same as an absolute freeze on recruitment. And it's very important, I think, that we as a synod hear that. We will be asked to manage on posts supported in the budget of 126.4, and there's a little PS there, I'm getting an extra curate, and curates, curates are good, so there is a little bit of a, 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 you know, an extra sort of a point in there. Why do we need to do this? And I'm not going to dwell on this slide because it's a slightly geeky, complicated slide. But basically, the uh, downward dotted line is what happens if we don't. And we go through the zero line, which basically means we run out of money. The top line, which is um, blue, has a little kink in it. And we're at the sort of, we're at 2017 in that line. The further bits of that blue line are just some financial projections of what it might look like in a particular set of circumstances linked to parish share contributions and other income coming in. Some of you will be sitting here saying, haven't we heard this before that we, are, we can't keep eating into reserves? All I would say is yes, we have heard it before and we are at a very pivotal moment and pivotal moments actually are very exciting because they give us the opportunity to rethink, to challenge, and to really work through what it means to be um, you know, God's community uh, in this part of the Northeast. So although what I am saying to you may sound rather downbeat, concerning on the parish share pledge and on other income streams, I do think it gives us a key moment and all of us in our deaneries, as we go into deanery planning mode, we will need to grapple with this. We will need to grapple with future forms of ministry and how we deploy our ministry. And actually, this could be very liberating and very exciting. There are moments when it feels a little scary, and those are probably when we're looking at the numbers. The numbers are merely one part of the storytelling, but it's for all of us to sort of recast the story and um, tell it maybe in a different way. So just to recap, sorry, back to the numbers bit. Um, income, 9.44 million, expenditure 10.29. Basically that leads to a deficit of 0.6. But a very important principle, that these are resources that we have been given not just to the diocese, but you as parishes also have resources. The challenge for us in all of this is to remain committed to the mission that God has given each of us, that commitment to growth and to spreading the gospel. So within that for us, the missional leadership for growth plans remain key to the vision. Deanery planning will remain a key part of activities. Our drive to deliver the plan on the page that remains key. And my own view is that if we hold that as key and we manage our finances appropriately with good governance, then actually this isn't a presentation about doom and gloom. It's actually a presentation about how we can be and live out God's calling to us.